Hey guys, how's it going? Of course you know who it is. The Good Doc back again once again with probably one of the most overdue topics in the Good Doc's history. I repeat, this has got to be one topic that is long overdue. For anybody who's new to the channel, guys, make sure you subscribe, like, do all the good stuff, okay? Let's get it out the way, all right? So today I wanted to have an honest, a very, very honest discussion about the education system in the Philippines from a foreigner's perspective. Now, I want to give you guys a brief introduction for anybody who doesn't know about my own personal educational background, and I'm going to throw in a couple of uh, tidbits of information that maybe you guys don't know. Well, many of you know that in uh, 20, oh sorry, 2006, I moved to the Philippines full time for my education abroad. Um, I had the opportunity to study abroad thanks to my father, who is retired military, and of course, my stepmother, you know, <laughs> and uh, of course, my mom, who actually helped to support me through my college experience, all right? Now, to give you guys some clarity on my studying situation abroad, basically, my mother and father helped to pay my way through college, and we'll get we'll we'll get into the breakdown of how much I paid in just a little bit. Um, overall, I'll even give you that little bit of information. Okay, so I had the opportunity to study abroad. I did so for ten years. I earned my business administration degree, major in marketing management. Um, got my master's degree in business administration. Then, then of course. The reason they call me the good doc, <laughs> I got my doctorate degree in uh, business administration, aka a DBA. So, a lot of people have been asking me, Doc, what was it like studying abroad? First and foremost, from the personal aspect experience, I loved it. You know, it gave me an opportunity to meet new people, experience new things, and I think that this is probably one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. In a live stream probably about maybe a couple of weeks to a month ago, I mentioned briefly a well-known fact that is speculative in nature in reference to the good doc. Um, I said that the Philippines' biggest export is their people. Now, in saying that, I did get a lot of agreements, and maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but I understand that a lot of OFWs or overseas Filipino workers are in the field of, I mean, like, normally they're just like maybe house help or things like that, but I don't want you guys to overlook the fact that some Filipinos that work abroad have to have an education. We have Filipinos abroad that are engineers, architects, and of course the ever so famous nurses <laughs> all over the world. So I kind of feel like the ideology of people who seem to want to downplay the educational system in the Philippines because it's a third world country, they have no idea what they are talking about. I believe, and I know for a fact, that the educational system in the Philippines is far more rigorous and I mean that word, I'm using big words tonight, rigorous, than the educational system college-wise in the United States. And many people are asked, Doc, how do you know this, bro? You never went to college in the United States. You went to college in the Philippines, so how do you know? I'm glad you asked. A lot of people know that the good doc does a lot of mentoring and tutoring, and I help college kids. So as a resort, as a result, I'm normally checking out their assignments in advance, seeing what they need to do, and trying to find my find the best way to help exercise their strengths in understanding the topic at hand. And when I read the content of what they're supposed to be studying and what they're supposed to be doing, I'm like, man, I do this shit unconsciously in my sleep. And I can honestly attest to the fact that that came from the ideology and the reason of me studying abroad all of the reason why i'm able to do and help these kids even though i do have a doctorate degree um it's because i studied abroad and this was things that were pretty much mandatory and standard in my education if not more rigorous than the way that they're presenting it as a matter of fact i'm gonna give you a quick example i almost failed english 
in the Philippines. Marinate on that for a second. I almost failed English in the Philippines. During my bachelor's degree, I was required to take four different English classes. I almost, I ain't gonna say I almost failed, but failure to me is a B. <laughs> I got like a low B in all of my English classes. Now, you'd be like, how the hell does a person who comes from the United States of America fail English? Well, I'm glad you asked. Basically, the English in the Philippines is taught from a very structured standpoint. Very structured standpoint. So, I can speak English to anybody, communicate to English with anybody, but when you're talking about breaking down nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, finding sequences and, and sentences and breaking down what part of the sentence is this, that's not what I do in my English class. That, I mean, that's not how I learn English, <laughs> you know? So that was how I almost failed. I, I don't, un, I mean, I understand, but damn, it was hard. So I want you to understand from that particular aspect, that is rigorous. They teach it by the book. They want you to perfect the English language in the Philippines for anybody who goes to college there. Now, to break down the numbers for you real quick, and I know I'm jumping around, just work with me, but you know, to break down the numbers for you, I'll tell you right now. And this is this was I want you to keep in mind this was in the early part of the 2000s from about 2006, 2007 to about 2011. I paid a whopping 10,000 pesos a semester for my degree. 10,000 pesos a sim, 20,000 pesos a year, $400 a year for my education. And my education was far more rigorous than the United States education system. Wow. Think, just think about that for a second, okay? You can't imagine spending that for your entire year of education in the United States. That might be enough to cover a book, if you're lucky. That covered my entire education for a year. Now, again, I'm talking specifically about the education, what I paid the school. Of course, books and all the other stuff that you had to do, eh, a little bit of extra fees, but it wasn't enough to break the bank, okay? We'll say 500 a year, an extra 100 if that makes you feel better. But that was it. And honestly, I do feel that the affordability, how cheap it is, is why it does attract a lot of people from other countries to study in the Philippines. But I don't want the affordability or the cheapness of the education to, to water down or make anybody think that I'm getting a shitty education as a result. I don't want you to think just because it's cheap that it's shitty because that is far, 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 far from the truth, okay? Please, please don't think that. So again, that was my bachelor's degree. And even when I was in my master's degree program, I had three classes per sim. I think that still averaged out to about 10K a semester, maybe 15K a semester. So we'll say I paid 30,000 a year for two years. And then for my DBA, it was roughly about the same, you know, three or four, three, maybe four classes a semester for three years, plus dissertation and all that extra stuff, which was a little bit more costly. I had to print my book, put my book together, you know, and submit a lot of documentation and get a lot of outside help with my field study and stuff like that. So there was a little bit more involved in that, but still, I probably didn't clear a grant in all of that. In my final three years of school, we'll say I cleared a grand, if that. All right. So I want you to understand it is very affordable to study in the Philippines. Now, let me note, I did study in Davao City. Number one, if you study at your Ateneo de Manila's or your Ateneo de Davao's, your, um, your, um, Damn, the Green Archers, man, I forgot that just off the top of my head. I'm sorry. But the other expensive schools, you know, in the uh, San Beta and all the other schools like that, I'm not sure of what you guys are going to pay. I'm only telling you what I paid. I have no problem revealing the financials of it because that was a long time ago. And let me note, and you should already know this, the good doc had no student loans and no student debt. So you let's let's make it abundantly clear i i'm i came out relatively unscathed 
Now, with all of that being said, there is one noteworthy potential downside and challenge as it relates to studying abroad. And this is where I feel like the video was going to definitely take a, a quick turn. I can honestly say that if you do not have anything set up for yourself when you graduate, should you choose to study abroad, especially in the Philippines, if you don't have anything set up for yourself, chances are it might be hard for you to find work. Um, the evaluation of your transcripts is key and very important. Wherever you choose to get a job at, or whatever you're choosing to do or utilize with the degree that you earned, know exactly what you want to do with that degree, okay? Know exactly what you want to do. It's better if you have something already put in place so that all you have to do is go to school, get the degree, bam, get back to work. But I also want you to take into consideration that if you have nothing planned, it can be difficult. It can be a challenge. And the reason that it can be a challenge is very simple. If you're trying to look for a job in the U.S., please believe they're looking for people who got the United States of America education. And if I must revert back to what I said to you guys earlier, that education ain't no better than the one that I received. Noteworthy information. But yet and still, they want people that graduated from their universities, and rightfully and respectfully so. So I don't want you to think that it's going to be an easy transition. I think it's best to have something set up for yourself. But if you do not, by all means, please find where you need to get your transcripts evaluated. I did that. It made it a little bit easier for me. But again, I'm not going to say that studying abroad doesn't come without its challenges, especially as it pertains to looking for work in your own home country. Now, should you have gotten a nursing job, or I'm sorry, if you had uh, come to school to study abroad to be a nurse, I think you would take the uh, nursing licensure exam, the NCLEX in the uh, United States, and you might be able to be licensed, but you would not be allowed as a foreigner to take the uh, the licensing exam in the Philippines. I think I, I had a foreign friend that studied the nursing program. Poor child, the poor dude. He he struggled with English, and I don't know how he passed, but he passed. Um, yeah, that's definitely uh, you know something that I need you to you know take into consideration as well. Um, if you're choosing to be a nurse or anything medical, you're not going to be able to take these particular tests in country but you might be able to take the test to be certified in your own particular country, all right? So, one more thing I wanna tackle before we get out of here. Um, I don't know the best way to tackle this, but you have a lot of people that are out there saying, well, in the Philippines, you can buy your education. I've heard that before. I've heard it. I've never known anybody that actually was able to do it. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm just telling you, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I did it the hard way. And I want you guys to know that it's not as rigorous as you might think it would be. Again, you can get through it relatively easy. I did. And I don't want you to think that your U.S. education is any better than the, U than the education that I got abroad. Chances are... With the expansion of the shit that I had to deal with and everything that I was able to see, the way that I think about certain concepts and techniques that they teach outside of the curriculum and outside of the book in the Philippines in reference to the United States, I think that if you compare my experiences to those that have degrees from any business program in the United States, I bet you mine compares just as good as anybody else's. But unfortunately, people have the ideology of uh, looking down upon us that choose to study abroad especially in a third world country i think that is where people lose sight of the value of education period oh you didn't get a education in a first world country you went to a third world country so your education can't compare to mine it's laughable at best i said i talk circles around some of your best scholars around here so don't play me but then again that comes from something else and we're not going to get into that topic of conversation but i hope that i've touched on this in a way that you guys were able to get a brief insight into what the education 
was like for somebody such as myself, the rigorousness from the example given by, uh, you know, the English classes that I had to take. Um, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of questions. And if a part two must be um, made, I have no problem doing so. You can comment down below if you have any questions. I will definitely answer them the best way I know how. I just wanted to definitely talk about this particular topic of conversation from the broad stroke perspective. And I appreciate you guys listening in. Doc ain't perfect. I know I jumped around a little bit, but I'm focusing on giving you guys quality content. And I hope that you found some value in a little bit about what I said. And I hope that there is some clarity on a little bit about what I said. Oh, and by the way, I think my mom was sending like $200 a month to help support my lifestyle in the Philippines. So yeah, your boy was definitely on the broke end <laughs> of the spectrum. But it's all good, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. But again, it was, hey, I, I lived that true college life, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sugarcoat it. It's all honesty from here on out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the content. This has been your boy, the good Doc, Dr. Mike TV. Many blessings to you. Take care. And I'll check y'all on the next one. Peace.